Ever since I saw pictures of the roads around Norway, I wanted to do a road trip there. But for years, I was not in a position to do so. This summer, I finally found the time to do this trip. Even though it rained a lot, the times when it didn't proved to be spectacular. I moved to California in 2015. Before that, I grew up in Sweden, which is right next to Norway. Even though I lived nearby, I never had the time or the possibility to do a motorcycle trip there. This year, I booked in a trip to Sweden to visit my family, and after that, rent a motorcycle in Sweden and ride into Norway. <laughs> I researched the roads around the coastline, as I had heard that these are the best ones for motorcycle rides. I also had to consider that I only had 5 days in total to ride and get back to where I started. I decided I was going to start the trip by riding to Bergen from Hönefoss by National Road 7, then go from Bergen to Ålesund by E39, then from Ålesund to Trollstigen, the famous serpentine road, then from there to Lillehammer by E136 and E6. My journey started with beautiful weather, around 17 degrees centigrade or 63 Fahrenheit. The landscape initially looked a lot like it does in Sweden, with big fields and farms, dense forests and lakes. As I drove west, the landscape started shifting more and more. I reached the Haradanger Plateau, which is the largest mountain plateau in Europe. There, the landscape featured treeless moorland with lakes, rivers and streams all around. My first stop along the way was Örtenen Lake to have a look at the cairns or Varde in Norwegian. A cairn is a stack of rocks that are meant to mark points of interest or caution along sail routes. Or when they are used on land, they can be used to show where the trail goes. As I drove further west, the mountains kept getting bigger and bigger, and I went through several tunnels which were longer than one kilometer, which is about 0.6 miles. Lakes were no longer present and were replaced by fjords. Fjords are created by glaciers and the fjord's proximity to a glacier can be seen by its emerald turquoise color. This color is created by the mud contained around the glacier which mixes with the water when the ice melts. I reached Bergen after around 7 hours, including stops. My hotel was close to Bryggen, which consists of buildings from the Hanseatic times. The Hanseatic League was a commercial and defensive confederation of merchant guilds and market towns, started in Germany in the late 1100s. Bryggen was set up in 1360, and the building's foundations have been preserved since that time. I went to bed quite early as the next day would be the big ride along the coast of E39 between Bergen and Ålesund. The day started out with heavy rain, but I was prepared with watertight Gore-Tex gloves, rain jacket and pants, as well as boot covers. Even though it rained, the temperature stayed around a nice 16 degrees centigrade or 61 degrees Fahrenheit. Around this temperature is nice when you have all the rain gear on, which doesn't breathe very well. Along the route I had to pass several fjords by ferry, 
which proved to be a nice way to get off the bike, stretch my legs and see some beautiful scenery. Having gone half the way, I stumbled upon one of the most peaceful and picturesque cities I have ever visited, called Vadheim. Life here seemed very serene and relaxed. As I continued, after having looked up if any houses were available for sale in Vadheim, the rain gradually became less dense. More fjords had to be passed by ferry, which I used to fill up with some coffee and chocolate. Coming closer and closer to Olesund, the sun eventually started shining through the clouds, and I managed to capture one of the biggest rainbows I have ever seen on camera. It's hard to see the scale on camera, but it looked like the size of a mountain. After that, the rain stopped completely, and the scenery close to Olesund was truly breathtaking. I reached Olesund late after an 8 hour ride. I had a quick dinner and fell flat on my face to sleep. I woke up extra early so that I could reach Trollstigen or Trolls Trail in time before too many tourists would be there, as it is a very popular tourist attraction. It rained slightly in the morning but cleared up after around 30 minutes of riding. The ride to Trollstigen was spectacular in itself. To enter the road from the bottom side, you pass over a small bridge that only accepts traffic in one direction. You really have to look twice, because it doesn't look like a road that will go to a major tourist attraction. Trollstigen is a serpentine mountain road, not too dissimilar to mountain roads here in California. 
The main attraction is the unique landscape surrounding the road. With two waterfalls, steep mountainsides which are all situated at the end of a valley. The true scale of this place is hard to describe with video. It is truly a place you need to visit in order to fully appreciate it. I didn't plan for the ride to Lillehammer to be a scenic ride. But this being Norway, it still delivered. I was tired and had a sore back from riding the rather compact BMW F800ST. But my head was clear from all troubles, and I had a different focus from when I had started the trip. If you ever get an opportunity to ride a motorcycle through Norway, I think you should take it. Over and out.